So MemGPT just dropped a huge update and now it supports local LLMs. And this is the only video you need to watch in order to learn how to set it up correctly. So let's get started. MemGPT uses GPT-4 or GPT-3.5 through the OpenAI's API. But in order to replace OpenAI's LLMs with a local LLM, you need to serve them through an API. In this video, we are going to do that through a three-step process. In the first step, we are going to use the Ubabuga text generation web UI to load and run a local LLM. In the next step, we are going to use the API server within the text generation web UI to host our LLM. And in the last step, we are going to connect that API back to MemGPT. Since my last video on MemGPT, there has been quite a few updates to the project. So I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process. In the first step, we need to install the text generation web UI. Okay, so I'm going to go and create a new virtual environment for my text generation web UI. So I'm going to use conduct create dash and text. So this is going to be the name of the virtual environment. And in this case, I'm using Python 3.11. Okay, so we'll simply accept this. Next, we need to activate our virtual environment. I'm going to just copy this. And now you can see the virtual environment is activated because we can see the text virtual environment in here. Okay, next we need to go back to the text generation web UI repo and simply clone the repo here. So we're going to copy this link and then we're going to go back to our terminal and just use the git clone command and then uh, provide the name of the repo. Now, if you want to put this in a specific folder, so you can provide a name here. So I'm going to just call it text gen. Let's hit enter. Okay, now we need to simply go to that folder. So for that, we're going to be using the cd command, which is text uh, change directory. And then we can go into this text gen folder that we just created. Now, if I type it LLS, you will see all the files that are present in this folder. Next, we need to install all the required packages. Now, this part is tricky and you need to be very careful about this one. So depending on your system, you need to select the proper requirements.txt file. So for example, I have an M2 and I'm running this with Apple Silicon. So I'm going to be using this specific text file to install all my uh, dependencies. So now the command that I'm using is this. So pip install dash r requirements apple silicon.txt. If you are running this on an NVIDIA GPU, just use this requirement.txt file. If you are running this on an AMD machine, then use this text file. And there is also uh, a CPU only file as well. So you can use this for a CPU machine. Okay, so the installation is complete. Now, in order to start the text generation web UI, we are going to use the Python server.py file and just run this. Okay, so you can see that uh, the server is running on localhost with 7860. Uh, that's the port ID. So you need to simply copy this. So this is going to open an interface like this. Then we need to go to the model and now download a model. Now, one thing you want to be careful about is you want to use a model that has the ability uh, to do function calling. Now, if we go and look at the example that they have provided, so they are using uh, Eroboros L270B. This is basically for parser, but we're going to just uh, use the same model. Now, the way you do it is you go to Hugging Face and look for the bloke uh, because he's the guy who, who will have all the models up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this uh, 70 build model. You can actually try this on a 7 build model, but I just want to see how good this is going to be on a 70 build model then you need to copy the model id from here then simply go back and paste it in here now if there are multiple branches and you want to use a specific branch so you can type colon and then uh, type main or other branch name so i'm going to be using the main branch okay if you want to download uh, the model in a specific uh, quantization so you need to go to files and versions 
and then look for the quantization level. So in this case, I want to download it, the 4-bit quantized model. So I'm going to simply select this one and copy the model name. Then we'll just go back to the text gen web UI, paste that and simply hit download. Okay, it's a very big file. It's around 40 gigabytes. So the download is going to take a while for me. If you are uh, downloading a smaller model, so it's going to be a lot quicker. Okay, while this is being downloaded, I'm going to go back and set up my virtual environment for MemGPT. Okay, so for MemGPT, I already um, covered the installation process in one of my previous videos. So link is going to be in the description of the video. So basically, we first need to clone the repo. So I open yet another terminal and we're going to type git clone. Then the repo ID or uh, link to the repo. So I'm going to just call it uh, mem GPT. Hit enter. Then we need to uh, change our working directory to this new folder that we created. I'll just type in ls to see everything is in there. Now we need to create a new virtual environment. Now for this, we are going to uh, simply create the virtual environment using this command. So conda create dash n. I'm, I'm calling the virtual environment memgpt. And I'm going to be using uh, Python 3.10.0. So in my case, uh, we already have that virtual environment on my machine, but I'm going to just recreate the whole thing. Now, similar to what I did for text generation web UI, I already activated the virtual environment. Next, we need to install all the requirements. So we're going to be using pip install dash r and then requirements.txt. Okay, now in order to run um, memgpt, we're going to use Python and then we will call this main.py file. So when we run this, uh, it is able to find uh, my previous configuration files. So uh, I'm going to say just don't use those. Now by default, it's uh, looking to either use GPT-4 or GPT-3.5. So you can switch between them by using the up and down arrow. But let's say GPT-4. Uh, now in this case, I'm, I haven't set up my OpenAI API key. So it's going to potentially throw an error. But there are a, a number of different uh, personas for the model itself so we're going to simply go with the first one which is sam right now you see that it's also asking for um, a user persona so there are two different which are available so there is a chat and then a csphd if you really want to understand what these are uh, make sure you watch my previous video if you haven't but let's simply select the basic one and then it says, would you like to preload pre anything into uh, memgpt's archival and memory? So I'm going to just simply say no, right? And if we hit enter, it throws an error because we haven't set the OpenAI API key. But in this video, instead of using the OpenAI uh, API, we are going to be setting up the local LLM through an API. So let me show you how to do that using the ubabuga text generation web ui next uh, we're going to load the local lm llm that we just downloaded within the ubabuga text generation web ui but in this case we're going to be hosting that through an api now in order to do that we're going to be using this specific command okay this might look uh, a lot more complicated than what we saw before but don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. So first, we are starting the Ubabuga text generation web UI server. But in this case, we want to use the API extension. And we are also blocking a certain API port. So this is the port on which we are going to be hosting our server. Uh, so in order to access it, uh, we will need to make calls on this specific port. Next, we are going to load the model uh, so this is the model that I downloaded. Now this a specific model supports function calling. And that is important because a memgpt make use of function calling uh, to perform different operations. Next, we are loading uh, this model using Llama CPP. Since I am on an M2, that's why I'm setting the number of GPU layers to one. If you are on an NVIDIA GPU, just look at the number of uh, GPU layers you want to offload and set those in here. So for example, a 70 billion parameter model has a total of 
83 uh, different layers, right? So depending on your uh, GPU and hardware, just uh, set those. The next th item is the context length. So I'm just setting it to 4096. Other parameters are also going to be hardware dependent. So you want to set the number of CPU threads that you want to use, as well as the batch size the model is going to be using. I found this uh, command on uh, GitHub repo of the MemGPT, and this has been very useful. Uh, their actual instructions are not really clear. So all we need to do is just run this command. Okay, so as you can see, it loaded the model for us. And uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you're running this on a GPU, you want to make sure that the blast is set to one. So that means it's using the GPU on your machine. Now we're going to be making calls uh, to the local host on this specific port number. Now, another thing to uh, notice is if you want to access the graphical user interface, just use uh, this uh, URL. But in this case, we are simply uh, listening on this uh, port number 5050. Now uh, you can set this port number to whatever you want, right? But I just uh, set it to uh, 5050. By default, I think the Ubabuga text generation web UI is using port number 5000. Okay, so our API server is up and running and it's listening to all the incoming traffic. Now we need to do a couple of other things on the memgpt terminal. So we need to set up two different environment variables and these commands are going to be provided in the video description. So the first one is the backend type. In this case, we will need to set it up to web UI. Now the second one is the OpenAI API base. So if you set this up, this basically overrides the OpenAI API key, or you can unset the OpenAI API key if you want. But if you notice, we haven't set our OpenAI API key. Now, this is basically the IP address uh, and the corresponding port number where our um, API server is running. So we'll just set this up. Now, in order to run memgpt with local LLMM support, we're going to be using this command. So the first part is what we have seen before. So Python main.py. Now we're using this model flag. So I'm, I'm providing a model name, which is the Erboros family of models. Uh, but this is going to be simply used for uh, using the output parser of the model, right? So even if you're using something like a 70, uh, 7 billion model, you could still use this output parser. If you don't uh, define an output parser, uh, that will simply use the default one. And they also recommend to use this no verify pl flag uh, because that tells the model to use, or that tells the memgpt to use uh, local LLMs. Uh, from my experiments, even if you don't provide this flag, it still works. But let's simply hit enter. Now you will see this warning, uh, which says that you are running memgpt with uh, this model, which is not officially supported yet, but just simply ignore this. Now let's hit enter. Now, if you go back to our API where we were listening, you will see that it started receiving um, some data from memgpt. Now, in my specific case, I am using this with a 70 billion parameter model. So that's why it's going to take a while for it to generate responses. But for a smaller model, you will expect much quicker responses, but it could run into some issues. I have seen that sometimes it's not able to uh, generate correct responses for smaller models. Okay, uh, so we got a response or like the initial conversation. So it says, hello, my name is Sam. How can I assist you today? All right, so I'm going to just simply say, hi, Sam, do you know my name? Now, it should be able to uh, get my name because of the user persona it has, but let's see. Okay, so it's able to retrieve it. So it says your name is Chad, and that is the default persona uh, that memgpt use. So let's uh, test the model and see if it works actually works okay so here is the response that uh, uh, it came up with i'm sam a digital companion i don't identify as a male or female uh, but my voice is soft and soothing okay so it thinks it has a voice or speech i'm curious empathetic and extraordinarily perceptive okay 
So uh, this works actually with the local LLM. Now I'm using a much bigger model, so 70 bill model. And the reason is uh, because it gives us much more coherent responses compared to uh, smaller models. Anyways, uh, this is how you run MemGPT with a local LLM on your local machine without the need of using OpenAI's LLMs. I hope you found this video useful. If you run into any issues, I put them in the comments below. Uh, I'll try my best to respond to them. Let me know uh, what are different topics you want me to cover in the next video. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.